Welcome to Delta Media Group's Tech Tuesday, where we hope to one day run alongside Forbidden Planet in the late night double feature picture show. So today we are going to take a look at AdWizard. Um, to get there, I'm going to go to Marketing and then down to, I'm going to click on it twice so it goes away, there we go, <laughs> and then go down to AdWizard and that will take me to the AdWizard landing page. Um, now, if I don't have that link, these, um, the navigation in the side tends to be customizable on a per-company basis, so if that link isn't there for you, generally you can go up here and you can type Ad Wizard into the Quick Actions box at the top, and that will bring up a link to this same page. So either way, you'll land here on this Ad Wizard landing page. Now, a recent change we have made um, makes it easier to get in and actually start using Ad Wizard. Previously, there was a bit of a barrier for entry there, where <clears throat> you would have to go in and uh, set up your account first. So you would have to go in and connect your Facebook business page and run through some, basically jump through some hoops there to get the account set up. Um, that has gone away. So at this point, all you have to do is go to AdWizard and you're all set to start creating ads. So what we'll do is we'll run through a new ad creation and then we'll just kind of take a quick look at each one of the options here so that you can get an idea of what kind of functionality is available to you. Uh, one thing I will point out is that there are a few places here, because of the way I'm logged into the system, where you'll see something that says Delta Only Tools. Um, that is something that will not be available to you in this interface, so it just won't show up for you here. And primarily that stuff is meant to be uh, diagnostic in nature for us, so that if you ever did have any problems with an ad you ran, uh, we have some additional tools to get in and try and diagnose what those issues are and get them solved for you. So that is why you do not see those buttons. So let's go ahead and create a new ad. To do so, I'm just going to click the New Ad button, and from here I get to choose what kind of ad I'd like to create. So the biggest difference here is that some of these ads are listing-based, uh, and some of them are not. So anytime I run a listing-based ads or a listing-based ad, I will have a few different options that aren't available to me on, say, a branded ad, for example, and kind of vice versa also. So we'll go ahead and create a new listing ad, and then we'll just kind of talk through it as we go. There we go. So you can see it loads up my designer interface, so now I can build out my ad. And what I'm going to do is go up here and put in either the address or the MLS ID of the listing that I'd like to use. So in this case, we'll start with the address here, which actually you can see it matched on MLS ID and address, so isn't that handy? <laughs> so we'll select that. And you can see just like that, it loads up uh, my listing data over here in the ad template. Now, this is the section that would essentially be missing, or rather the step that would be missing if I were creating a branded ad. Um, so I wouldn't be attaching a listing to it, so I wouldn't be able to define the target by radius, because it's a radius around the listing. Um, so instead, I would just have options for zip code. And if I do want to create a listing ad that is based on zip code, I can do that as well. If I just click this button, it toggles over to zip code, and now I can put up to three zip codes here and target that, those areas instead for my ad. So we'll switch it back to radius. And that defaults to 15 miles, um, but depending on kind of the population density or really the house density <laughs> around your subject property, um, you may want to make that higher or lower. So you do have the ability to change that to whatever you'd like and whatever makes sense. Uh, keep in mind that when you do go through and um, select that or when you create these ads, there is a step where it gives you kind of an estimated performance for that ad. So that's where this really comes into play. So if you see that that looks really low, you can go back to this step, increase your radius, and see if that does any better as far as the estimated ad performance. Now the next thing I can do down here is I can choose a template for this ad. So we'll click on this, and you can see this is my just listed with flag. This is, this is the flag up here. I can do just listed with a ribbon instead. Isn't that nice? I, I like it. Or we can do a listing carousel, and these are pretty neat. So this is the photos for this ad laid out in a carousel. So if somebody did see this ad, they'd be able to swipe through the listing photos right here in the ad. So just kind of a handy, handy thing to be able to do. Next thing I can do is I have the text to use for the heading for this. So in this case, or the case of this template, this is that headline. So if I wanted to change that, I can change it here. The description text, which is right here, which again, because this is a listing ad, we're auto-filling it with listing information. If this were a branded ad, you could type whatever you wanted here and really you can type whatever you want here for a, a listing-based ad also. It just has some more obvious things that it can set it to for you ahead of time to save you the extra steps. And now the last thing we have here is the website. So really, this is just the URL that this ad will link to. By default, because this is a listing-based ad again, this is set up as the listing detail page. You could change this to whatever you want, 
but as it says here, changing it could have a negative impact on your ad performance. So for example, if this were a listing ad, but you had it direct to your home page instead, the ad's probably not going to perform as well. Um, or you definitely won't get as many uh, conversions from it at the very least. So you do have the ability for this though. Now in a listing ad, this would mainly come into play if you wanted to add things like uh, the UTM tracking tags to this URL so that you can keep track of what leads came from where, or what leads came from which ad campaign rather. This would be a, a good way to do that. So you could put those codes in um, and you would have to generate the whole URL. Just start with this as your base URL and then you would paste in whatever you generate. It'll be something like UTM campaign equals something. <laughs> something along those lines is what you'd end up with and you would just copy and paste that into this field. Now, the next thing you can do, depending on which template you've chosen, we'll go back to our just listed with flag, is you can actually modify the ad itself sum over here in this um, display interface for the actual ad. So you can see if I click on address, it highlights in red. If I double click in here, I can actually change this text out very easily. Um, there are different things that I can click on and move around here. So I can grab my photo, I can move it. Perfect. Almost. Now it's perfect. <laughs> so I can modify my picture, move that around. Um, and then even though this heading text and this uh, detail text or description text rather is set down in these fields, I can also modify it right in the design in the case of these designs. I want to spell my name differently. If I want to add some more text there, I have the option to do that. Now also, because this is a listing based ad, you can see it has loaded all of the listing photos down here at the bottom. So I can click on any of those to have the background photo on my ad refresh and use that new photo. There we go. I do love a good kitchen. So I have the ability to do that because this is a listing ad. Now, if this was a branded ad, there would be a similar section down here, but it wouldn't be populated with listing photos. Instead, it would be populated with a photo gallery that you could then use to just select from that gallery and put whatever photo back there you'd like. Um, so just some different options depending on what kind of ad you create. So we'll say that this is the one we want, so we want to stick with this. We'll go down here and click Next. And at this point, it gives me the estimated performance of my ad, which again, if I didn't like this, I could click Previous and go back and increase my, uh, my radius or change my zip codes, however I set that up. Um, and then it also gives me the estimated cost, which we come in right there at the cost, so those estimates are accurate. Um, and also lets me decide how long I'd like this ad to run which affects the cost. The cost is really a per day cost is what it breaks down to, but you want to do at least a few days because it's not really worth doing the ad otherwise. Um, but let's say I want to run it longer. We'll click on my end date here, or even better, let's say I don't want this ad to actually start until, call it the beginning of November. And then I want it to run until say the 16th. It's kind of a long running ad, but that'll work. You can see all of these numbers are updated, so this gives me a more accurate representation of what I can expect my performance to be, or what we believe that performance will be, and also updates the cost up here. Lastly, I can decide where I'd like this ad to show. At this point, only Facebook is available. Now, we may add some more um, ad organizations down here in the future, but for now, Facebook's what you got. So now we'll go down here and click on Next. Now this takes me to my last step where I can actually review the ad, make sure that everything looks good, uh, the range, the time, all this thing, the radius, target website, my UTM campaign something. <laughs> all of that's all set, everything looks good, so now I'm going to click on finish. And this takes me to the final step where I would ultimately pay for this ad and then the ad will start running, or rather it will start running on the date that I have set for it to begin. From here I can either click pay hundred in this case $192, but pay whatever the amount is of this ad, and it would pay using a pre-saved payment profile if I have one. So if, for example, I set up um, some other functionality in the Delta Net, let's say I purchased a domain name through the Delta Net, so I created a payment profile at that time, if I just click pay here, it'll just bill to my stored payment information in my already created payment profile. If I have a payment profile created, but I don't want to use it for this, I just want to use like a one-time use um, or put in a credit card for a single time use for this ad, I can click here and it will open up a modal that allows me to enter that credit card information so that I can use that just one time. That information does not get stored. And then lastly, if I'm not ready to pull the trigger on this yet, I can just click save and return. So now my ad is saved, but you can see it's payment required down here. So it won't actually run when the date comes up unless I go in here, click this button, and run back through the process. 
it has to think about it again. There we go. <laughs> and actually complete the payment at this point. The next thing I can do is I can also just trash this ad. If I don't want to keep this one for any reason, just click delete and um, the ad will go away. So there you go. There's the basics of it. That is how you can get an ad set up, um, paid for, and ultimately running through the Delta Net using AdWizard. Um, now, once you have a bunch of ads in here, you may want to be able to narrow these down. So you do have the ability to use these filters to narrow down what you see in this list. Um, the next thing you can do is we have a separate reporting page. So if I go over here to reports, you can see this is our reports page. So this will give you basically the ads you've run. You can select those different ads to see how they performed. And you can also, if you have a lot of ads in here, you can narrow it down by date range. And it'll also list all your ads down here. So it's just a nice quick and easy way to see how all of your ads have performed through AdWizard. Um, and then you can also export this report if you want to get it in like a CSV and use it in some other way. Next we have the payment history page, which is the same kind of idea, just reporting on the um, transaction amounts and just all of the, the payment history you've had through AdWizard. Uh, pretty self-explanatory for the most part, just the ability to set a date range and select even specific ad campaigns if you'd like. Now if we move on to settings, you can see we have some Delta specific settings up here at the top, um, but for the settings that you have, uh, that you're able to utilize on your own rather, you have the ability to show a call to action pop up on any listing based ads. So if the ad is a listing based ad like the one we just set up as a new listing ad, I could check this box and then when someone clicks on that link and they land on the listing detail page, a call to action will pop up for them requesting that they enter their information and you know ultimately turn into a lead. So that is what this setting is for. Moving right along, the next thing we can do is we can set up bulk profiles. So if you do like the idea of having the system create ads for you, you can use this system. So the big benefit of creating them on your own is you have more control on a per ad basis. So you can decide exactly what the reach is for each ad or exactly what the radius is for each ad. Um, you can customize the template. So you have a lot of options there. But the drawback is every time you get a new listing or do a price reduction or an open house or whatever, you have to remember to go in and create it. In this case, you can go in and set up a profile so that it will automatically do the, all that work for you so you don't have to touch a thing. So to do that, right now I have this on Add New. If I had profiles set up already, I could actually select them here if I wanted to go in and modify them. But since I don't, we'll just add a new one. We'll call it Test Profile. And then I can decide whether or not I want this profile to basically be active and create ads. So should we create ads for this profile? Yes. Now if I click Next, now I can go through and set up what I want this bulk profile to do. So let's say, for example, I wanted it to just create new listing ads for me. So right here's my new listing ad settings. Um, we'll say that I only wanted to run, or I, rather I only wanted to create ads for listings that are over a $100,000 uh, minimum listing price. So we'll put that in. We'll say I want them all to be a 10 mile radius around the listing. And again, this is going to affect every ad this creates. So I can't do it per listing this way. But again, the big benefit is I don't have to do anything. <laughs> it goes ahead and creates the ads for me. So that's pretty handy. Um, I can choose how long it runs. So let's say I always want to run them for four days. But I have a lot of options here. I can actually go all the way out to 30 days if I'd like. But we'll, well, we'll, we'll go with nine days. Why not? Um, I can decide whether I want to force that lead registration for all the ads this creates. So if I do, then someone clicks on any of these ads and goes through to my website, it'll take them to a page that forces them to register. So I could say yes if I do want that to happen, or just leave that unchecked if I don't. Next, I can choose what I want my maximum weekly budget to be. So if I never want to spend more than, let's say, $200 per week, I can put that value in. And then, oh, here we are. It has to be at least $150. We're, we're getting there. 200 is at least $150. We'll, we'll make it 150 <laughs> There we go. It's not going to tell me again. So we'll just make it $150. There we go. So my maximum weekly budget for ads is $150. And basically all that's saying is in a week, it's never going to charge me more than that amount, which is important because, you know, you don't want this thing to uh, run off on its own. Um, if you were doing ads for a lot of different things. So if I'm only doing new listing ads, you know, I'm pretty safe for the most part. If I was also doing price reduction ads, open house ads, community-based ads, if I was doing all of that at once, then it would be a different story because, you know, maybe I set up a lot of open houses and I get a few new listings that week and I reduce price a couple of times. 
it could add up quickly. So that's why you have the ability to put in this budget. That way you don't have to worry about this thing running over if you do have it automated to create a lot of ads. Next, I can narrow down the property category if I'd like. So if I only wanted to create ads for my residential listings. Um, now I could also create them for multifamily, commercial land, or rental if I'd like. Um, but it's up to you. <laughs> so in my case, we'll go just residential. I only wanted to create ads on active listings, though I could also have it create ads for coming soon listings if you'd like and if we also have that data. And then lastly, I enable it. I'd like it to create this kind of ad. Now I could do the same thing for price reduced and open house as I kind of alluded to. Um, so you do have the ability to have this ad profile basically create different kinds of ads and I would fill all those out the same way. So scroll down just a bit here. Um, once you have your ad profile set up the way you'd like to create the kinds of ads you would like it to create, you just click finish. And now your bulk profile has been created. So you can see I can click on it and find it here in the drop down. It loads up and now at this point I can either delete this profile, I could turn it off so it's not creating ads anymore, or I can click next and all of my settings are here so I can modify it however I'd like. So there you have it. So we'll click on finish. There we go. And that is how you can set up those bulk ads. So now we'll just run back over to the home page here. So I'm just going to click back on Ad Wizard. So that takes us back to my Ad Wizard home page. Uh, from here, I can then click on Edit Account, where I have some information in here about setting up a profile or setting up my payment profile. So this is just a shortcut to get to that payment profile page if I don't want to um, recreate or re enter my payment information every time I create an ad. Also, you need to have a payment profile set up in order for the bulk ads to run. So it's not going to be able to run them automatically if it doesn't have any way of billing you for them. Now in the Facebook section on this page, um, this was primarily stuff that was attached to the way that AdWizard accounts used to be set up. So these are things that relate to connecting to your Facebook business page specifically. However, as AdWizard no longer requires the connection of a Facebook business page in order to get it set up, um, these settings are really no longer relevant anymore. Now next we have a tip section just to give you some general ideas on the best ways to go about creating ads to get the most performance out of them. So just kind of a handy resource to go in to help you out when it comes to creating these ads. And then lastly we have the home button which just takes you right back to the AdWizard homepage again. So there you go. That is how you can go in and start working with AdWizard and creating new ads. Um, as always, thanks a lot for joining me. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to send an email to support at deltagroup.com or give us a call and we can help you out with whatever you need. So thanks a lot and I will see you again next week.